All right, so we're gonna talk about tier list and Lost Ark, the thing that every streamer hates to see in their chat. They die a little bit inside every time somebody talks about, is this class viable? Is this class good? Should I play this class? So I thought it'd be fun to talk about the pros and cons of tier list, what to take away from them and what they're not telling you. So no matter what you play, you've seen a tier list before. You know what they are. If you want to know who the best waifu is, there's a tier list for that. If you want to know what character power is, there's a tier list for that. No matter what game, no matter what genre, tier list generally just exists for everything. My personal favorite tier list is the old rock, paper, scissors. No shot you've never played rock, paper, scissors before, and you know people are just throwing rock. But if you haven't seen it, you know, take a look. I think it's funny. I have a little laugh every time I see it. But also, I think I just like rock, paper, scissors content. Which, if you haven't seen the eight great gambits of rock, paper, scissors, pause the video for a moment, you know, give it a read. I think they're hilarious. I love them. But we're getting a bit off topic here, so enough rock, paper, scissors. So when it comes to a tier list in Lost Ark, the big thing that people are going to talk about and the main thing that tier lists are going to be about is going to be the damage of the class and engraving. So I call this the theoretical damage ceiling. This is because you can't really get real world data. You can't run damage meters because the cops will be knocking on your door for using something against TOS. To compare classes at their peak, meaning, you know, proper stats, everything like that, no variables, you have to use Trixion. This results in tier lists being about hitting a scarecrow for like two minutes long, seeing what class does the most at that time. So positional uptime, following the boss, chasing in the back, chasing the front, landing your entire burst. These are things not really considered when making a tier list. So we've got two tier lists to look at today, one from ATK and the other one from Invent. Now if we take a look at both of them, they're pretty similar, you know, a lot of classes, a lot of engravings are generally in the same area. But hold up, wait a minute. If we look at a lot of these classes that are ranked highly, there's something a lot of them have in common. I should say most of them, and that they are spec classes. We have one crit class up there with Rage Hammer, but we got some swiftness up there. So we're looking at Order of Emperor, Wind Fury, Energy Overflow, and also Communication Overflow. Love it or hate it, spec usually scales the best. Now, when it comes to the concept of tier list, I don't think it's bad because you're gonna end up putting so much time into this character, so much work, effort, and probably in-game gold that you really wanna know what you're getting yourself into. So I think it's beneficial to see how the community views your investment on a certain class. Because again, if you're not everybody's favorite Persian maid, it's gonna be more than a one day endeavor to get yourself to end game. So with gaming, tier lists are pretty simple. It's usually just how good or strong a class or character is. What goes unfactored and not part of it is gonna be player skill. So tier list in Lost Ark is gonna be about level 10 gems, max tripods, absolutely everything capped out. So it's a pretty common topic in the FGC that lower level players really shouldn't take tier lists too seriously because they're not playing the character at its ceiling for tier to really matter. That is a factor in Lost Ark, but also the other big factor is cost. So like even if you are playing the S tier class, you got the good rotation down, you play it decently well, but you know, your gems are low, your quality is low, you might just lose to this F tier class. Your combat stats, they're huge. For swiftness, it's gonna affect how fast your rotation goes off and obviously your movement. For spec classes, it's gonna be increased meter gain and more damage on a certain type. So translating those to Arcana, it's gonna be your card draw rate is gonna change and also how much damage your red skills do. Cause even though everybody says tiers don't matter, the market doesn't lie and these high tier classes are always more expensive. So if your goal is just doing damage, you want MVP, you want Crow Fighters, so you gotta be honest with how much you're gonna be willing to spend to make these characters shine. You know, going back to my Arcana video, I compared the prices of Empress and Emperor. You know, Emperor was cheap. It was the third of the price of the meta Empress build. Even just switching from Raid Captain to a less popular engraving like Barricade for a minor DPS loss made the engraving the class a lot more affordable. So if you're really trying to be efficient with your characters, you should really consider cost and the cost of entry to get into these classes for the power you're gonna get out of them. Now I said this in the Arcana video and I will say this again. Those prices are your cost of entry into the class and when it comes to level 10 gems, these cheaper swiftness classes will catch up in cost because damage gems on level 10 gems are a lot more expensive and you're usually gonna use more on a swiftness class. So I decided to make a class summary sheet. I listed off classes, engraving, synergies, what their primary and secondary stats are, kind of how they weigh them, how much damage and cooldown gems they use, and what are the common engravings when people talk about optimal building. This is information I compiled from NA and KR players alike. It can help show what engravings classes use and what engravings are kind of more meta than others. For damage classes, I put together a list of how many times that that engraving appears and the list of what they want to use. So generally accessories with these ones that are lower in the count are going to be cheaper to buy. 
The exception is Cursed Dull. Cursed Dull is high in the list because it is an optional 5th engraving generally for most, and it's one a lot of people tend to generally avoid. And if you're a Swiftness class, you can pretty much always avoid Cursed Dull because you have the ability to run Mass Increase. It yields a similar damage, but instead of losing out on healing, you just get attack speed reduction, but with all the swiftness you have stacking, you're already attacking fast as is. So yeah, that's my sheet. Feel free to use it, look at it. I just thought it'd be good to have a good overall summary of all the classes. If you want things in detail, I honestly suggest going to the community guides, looking at max roll, KR sources, and builds. You still have to take with a bit of grain and salt with it. They have access to ancient gear. They have higher skill points, which give them more options in their builds. So you know, what's best in KR might not be the best for global as of right now. And I think the last big thing to talk about that isn't covered in tier list is really the class's role. Yes, there is PvP in the game, but the game isn't designed around that. It's not a design around fighting each other. It's about working together. So a lot of these high damage classes might be lacking in stagger destruction, unless you're summoner. If we take Gunlancer for example, you know, that's not getting cruel fire and MPVs anytime soon. But people still love Gunlancers on their parties because they're class energy. Not with that, but they do have good stagger and destruction. The harsh truth and downside to that, however, is those type of roles can be easily replaced by items. You have destruction grenades, you have whirlwind grenades, and you can be like, whoa, 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 what about dark grenades? Yes, true, dark grenades will increase your group's damage, however, that is only for a limited time and overall less effective, and also you could still use dark grenades with high damage classes. Evo Scouter, talking about them, that is one class that I play, I progged battle with, and I had a good time with it. But as you can see in ATK's tier list, this is a class that he's actually seen gate kept. And over here in NA, it's really no different. It's a class that brings subpar damage, and it doesn't even bring that great of synergy. However, it does give itself a shield on transformation, which makes it a reliable class to take, but still, that generally isn't enough for people to take it. Because that just makes it a pretty selfish class to play, because you're only really benefiting yourself, but other people playing other classes will still probably live doing more damage and so forth. Lastly, I want to say that, you know, balance patches do happen, revamps happen, and the meta does shift. This is what happened with the Krana, and it happened with Summoner, and it happened with Barrage, which are the three in the top of the tier list. This does not mean that every time they do a class revamp that, you know, the lower tier classes are going to be top tier. That's that's still up to Smilegate. And the truth is that they don't really care about these theoretical damage dealings. They don't care about that. That's not how they balance the game. They have their own internal data that they go off of, and they have their intentions of where they want the class to be. So let's look at January's balance patch in KR, which is also the balance patch we're getting well, tomorrow as of recording this video for the artist update. And for the KR patch notes, the devs leave notes on why they make these changes. So if we look back at the tier list, we can see Summoner's there on the top, and well, and it actually did get nerfed, but probably not in the way you would think or expect when looking at a tier list. The class got a small damage nerf, however, the Master Summon Engraving, the one that is ranked higher, got buffed, so that means really only Communication Overflow got nerfed, Master Summoner is still up there in the moon. So it's right there in the comments that Communication Overflow is on average doing more damage than they intend and Master Summer is not. So they don't really care about the damage ceiling and the tier list kind of stuff. And then we'll talk about one more example, one that, you know, makes me sad to talk about. And that of course is the class I kind of main, which is Scouter. Rest in peace Scouter bros, we're probably not going to the moon anytime soon. As it says right there in the developer comments is, Machine's overall performance has been close to the intended level. So the changes are very minor for the class, and overall, you know, we really can't expect them to really juice it up that high. The fact is, they just don't want the class to be high damage. They want it to do other things than that and do that for the party. The downside is that, that it just isn't enough because the class doesn't take much for the party. It doesn't benefit everybody that much. There are just better classes and gravings to bring to the party than a scouter because it doesn't bring a good synergy. It doesn't bring good damage. Yes, it does have, you know, some decent stagger and destruction. But again, I said those things can be replaced by items more easily than anything else. Because knowing all this, I still play Scouter and I still intend to play it for a while. But that is only until Slayer because Slayer is probably going to be everything I want in Transformation class. It brings a lot to the party and it also just contributes a lot better as shown so far in KR. While having that Transformation playstyle. So you can get some pretty valuable information out of tier lists. But it's pretty easy to misuse the information because they don't tell you the whole story. So really keep in mind what it takes to get to that point where tier lists matter, which is going to really boil down to how much gold you're willing to spend. You really have to decide what you want from your class, you know? Again, if you just want a cruel fighter, yes, then a tier list is pretty important to you. But there are some people who just prefer to play other classes like Gunlancer, who bring a good synergy and a lot of utility to the party. That makes them a pretty high demand class for parties 
especially for back attackers as their synergy greatly affects them. So decide what you want out of your classes and then go for that. Because ultimately you're going to be spending so much time on these classes doing all your weekly homework, your raids and all that kind of stuff. So picking what you enjoy and what you can do all this content on every week is the most important thing. And this is why when you ask your favorite streamer, what class should you play? Is this like viable and all that kind of stuff? The response is just play what you want. Like me personally, I've been dropping spec classes in preference for swiftness classes because I can afford these accessories. I'm honest, man. I'm broke and I know I don't have the money to spend on these high-end spec classes. So now hopefully you understand a little bit of detail why people argue over tier list and lost track and why they matter or why they don't. I think knowing the ceiling of your class is important. You know, you wouldn't want to invest all your time and budget into this class and then realize that it still gets gay kept no matter what you do. But I don't think hyper focusing on just damage is a healthy thing to do because you'll probably burn out because you're just so focused on the damage. For me personally, tier lists don't matter that much. I like looking at them and seeing what people think, but I've low panged and benched more of the top tiers than I play. I never pushed DB, I never pushed Sorg or my Artillist, I never really pushed them, I decided I didn't really want to play them. I pushed my Summoner to 1490 just to get a lot of gold off of Chaos Dungeon by selling tripods because I knew this was going to be a high in demand class because it's top tier and yeah it has made me a lot of gold. And I did want to try out the class for myself but I decided that it really wasn't going to be roster material for me, especially at the cost that it's going to take to 5x3 it. So find the class engraving that fits you and what you want to do. So that'll be it for me ranting on about tier list. Let me know what characters you play and why you pick those. And if you want to help me with the algorithm, you know, like and sub, I guess. And that'll be it. Thanks for watching.